So good to see you. I just believe you're in the right place at the right time. You know, it's the end of the year, and most people around this time begin to make what is commonly called New Year's resolutions. Now, a resolution is defined in two ways. A firm decision to do or not to do something. How many of y'all have resolved not to do something? How many of y'all resolved to do something? That's a resolution. Now, some synonyms for this word include intention, decision, aim, and plan. Another definition of the word resolution is the action of solving a problem, a dispute, or contentious matter. How many of y'all got some contentious matters that need to be resolved in your life? How many of them contentious matters is with yourself? Amen. Oh, I'm preaching better than you. Amen. Now, although the word resolution is not found in the original text in the Bible, the idea is all over the Bible, especially in the New Testament. People make resolutions every year to themselves and others about next year being so much better. How many of y'all just think 2019 is just going to be so much better? Not enough of y'all think of it. Maybe I'll ask the individual. How many of y'all on this side think 2019 is going to be so much better than your 2018? How about y'all? How many of y'all think 2018 is not going to be nearly as great as 2019 is going to be? Thank you, Jesus. But Better how and better where? Are you going to be better in your commitments? Better in your health? Better in your grades? Better in your work ethic? Better in your grind? Better in your relationships? And that means all of them. To God, yourself, and to others. And some will commit to do better in their finances, communications. You know, that's one I had to deal with. And I'm still growing. I remember uh, when I first started pastoring, you know, we're in the age of emailing. And people would email me, I'd read them, and I wouldn't respond. Did you get my email? So then they they emailed Pastor Melvin and said, will you please tell your husband? Like, I read it. He's like, why didn't you respond? Like, I didn't know I had to respond. So I had to learn you have to respond to email, even if it's, I got it. (laughs) Better in my communications, you know, we're going to get better in our attitudes, better in our perspectives, and better in our perceptions. Others will make the resolution to be a finisher, to complete what they've started, and to self-evaluate their strengths and their weaknesses. A lot of resolutions for a lot of people. But if you really think about it, many, have, many of these resolutions have come or have been made, but very little of them have been carried out. Now, why? Because it was an emotional decision. It was something that happened because it was the way you felt at that time. And although... An individual may sincerely desire the change. The desire alone is not enough to produce lasting change. What is needed is three things. Number one, write this down, a change of mind. Number two, a change of direction. And number three, consistency. I'll say it again, a change of mind a change of direction, and consistency for resolution to be real in your life. Now, don't get me wrong. A change of mind is good because if you change the way you think, you'll change your life. The problem with most people is that they keep changing their mind. So their behavior doesn't catch up with their mind change long enough to change. 
So many of you have made a decision in 2018, I'm going to eat better. I'm not going to eat any more junk food until somebody opens up a bag of Doritos. I'm not going to eat any more McDonald's until you don't have time to cook and you just running through and you starving and that drive through is so convenient. The thing that I realize is there's always going to be a convenient reason not to keep your resolution. It's going to take a change of mind and behavior. In other words, we need to be resolved and not just resolutions. A resolve means that you've settled the matter. You're determined to make it happen and your life is firmly fixed on that course of action. You're determined, say, I want you to say this. Say, I, I am, determined. am determined. Say it again. Say, I, I am, determined. am determined. You see, when you want to simply make a resolution, there is no spiritual strength behind that resolution. God doesn't want resolutions. He wants transformation. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this. <clears throat> Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How will I be transformed? By the renewing of my mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen, we just want to change our life, and God wants to transform our life. Because when you just change your life, then your life can be changed again to some other way. But God is saying, I want to transform it so what it was, it can never go back to. That's why you got to have your mind transformed and just not changed. Because the change will change if if somebody else tells you there's a different change that's coming. I'll let that just sit there for a minute, let you see a lot of it. You see, you want... To change your lives, but God wants to transform your lives. This year, let's make up our minds not to make any more resolutions, but to be resolved about what you want in your life. Be firm in your purpose and your intent. Be determined. In other words, be persuaded. Go with me, if you would, to Romans chapter 8. Starting at verse 31. Reading us out of New King James, it says this. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Verse 35 says, and who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Or distress? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. He's saying, listen. In tribulation, you're more than a conqueror. In distress, you're more than a conqueror. During persecution, you're more than a conqueror. When you ain't got enough to eat, you're more than a conqueror. If you ever naked, you're still more than a conqueror. If peril or even a battle comes your way, you are still more than a conqueror. Amen. 
Then he goes on to read. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You got to be persuaded that nothing will separate this love of God that is willing to make sure that whatever you need, you're going to have it. You got to be persuaded, fixed, settled. It's a done deal. It's got to be that way in you. And here's the thing. Don't just stop at being persuaded. No, move on into being fully persuaded so that the things you need to do to reach your goals will be walked out. When you are fully persuaded, you've moved into what the Bible calls faith. And when your faith is there, a commitment and a determination to do everything necessary to see that this desire comes to pass begins to happen. When your faith is locked onto something, it's gone beyond your thought process. Your heart is now engaged into it. And when your heart gets engaged, it now becomes a part of you and becomes a part of your That's mine. Whether it's in my hands or not, it's in my heart. So it already belongs to me. Do you see what I'm saying to you? Because here's the thing. Your hands may not get what it wants, but your heart is created to always get what it desires. Romans 4.21 says this, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he has, he was able to also perform. You got to be fully persuaded. How many of y'all that God has made some promises to you? How many of those promises he made that they were going to happen in 2018? You still got to be fully persuaded that they still can be done. So what if they don't happen in 2018? So you mean to tell me God can't get them done in 2019? God don't care nothing about the calendar. God don't deal in time. Time means absolutely nothing to him. So don't think because it didn't happen in the time frame that you thought it should happen that God still isn't able to perform it. You got to be fully persuaded that it's going to come to pass. I mean, settle it. When you're full of something, that means that there's no more room for anything else. That means no room to change your mind and no room for a second opinion. You see, the problem with most of us is we've been programmed. If something ain't right, go get a second opinion. Something ain't working, go get a second opinion. Listen, when God says it, there is no second opinion. There's no second opinion to be had. It is what it is, and that's what it's always going to be. You got to settle that. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Done deal. I, I don't even have time to fight with myself on whether or not I think it's going to come to pass. You realize there's times where you got to shut down your thinking and start believing from your heart. There's times where you got to fight past the thought that this might not happen. To engage your heart to believe there's no way it can't happen. You have to get to a place where it's settled in your heart. Again, you're resolved. That resolve means, again, firm in purpose or intent. You're determined to see it through until you get the desired results. 
Now, when you are resolved and fully persuaded, you get to the next level. Say the next level. There is another measure of strength that kicks in for you when you accomplish your goals or for you to accomplish your goals, and that's called the anointing. Say the anointing. The anointing is the oil that makes the machine of faith flow smoothly. Go with me to Philippians 4 and 13. In the Amplified, it says it like this. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confidence. He said, listen, I can do all things which he called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me. The anointing is that thing that makes the difference that you don't have. It fills in the gap where you lack, it makes you more than. Where you're empty, it makes you full. Where you don't know, you have all wisdom. That's the anointing. And there's something that kicks in when you fully persuaded that this is going to come to pass. And this ain't just, oh, I just got some strength. This ain't regular strength. This ain't going to the gym weightlifting strength. Understand, God has said in his word that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. This is a different weapon we get to use. This is a weapon Satan can't whoop, haters can't beat, Doubters can't stop. Naysayers can't keep it from happening. This is an anointing that's on your life that takes you from one level to the next. And you don't even know how you got there. And you operating in it in such a flow that it don't even feel like the anointing. It just feels like this is how it's supposed to be. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? But first, you got to get resolute. Then you got to get persuaded, and then you got to take it to the next level to be fully persuaded. Over in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, in the New Living Translation, it says this. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue this work until it is finally finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. You got to be at a place where you are certain that what God started on the inside of you, that, that dream he gave you, that desire he gave you, that, that vision he gave you, that ministry, that job, that business, those gifts, you got to be fully persuaded that they are going to end up coming to full manifestation and floration. Even if it takes until Jesus comes. What does that mean? 2018, 2019 means nothing. God doesn't care about the time zone. He cares about the finished result. Days mean nothing. You got to understand days are different for us than God. Our days are 24 hours. His days, one day is as a thousand years. So he don't deal with time the way we do. He deals with it completely different. And he deals with it in such a way that he, he makes sure that everything is complete in his time frame. Do you hear what I'm saying? But you got to be certain. God, you started this thing. You started this thing in me, and I'm fully persuaded, and I'm feeling my help come on. You know, you, you, you know when the saints feel the anointing, oh, I feel my help now. <laughs> there is going to be 
in this process of getting fully persuaded, where you're going to feel your help come on. And doors that were closed will suddenly be opened. People that were hating you will suddenly be adversaries or be, or be allies because the anointing then kicked in. And our folks who was on the opposite team want to be on your squad. The anointing that kicked in. And he said, listen, I don't care how long it takes, it's going to come to pass. The issue is, are you willing to be fully persuaded and resolute enough to see it come to pass. Problem is, with most people, they see the time frame like, this is taking too long, so obviously, this ain't God. This has been too hard, so this can't be God. There's too much work in this. There's too much, uh, uh, too many obstacles in my way. This cannot be God. Explain to me anywhere in the Bible where God says, I'm going Make your life easy because you've given your life to me. Listen. That's why he said in his word, listen. He said, come to me, y'all. My yokes are easy and my burdens are light. Why is is this burden light? Because there's anointing to make the difference in your strength. There's an anointing that kicks in that takes you to the next level. So if you have a dream, a vision, or a desire, and you need to do something or stop doing something, this is the last Sunday that you can make that decision. Step into being fully persuaded and step into faith. Have a resolve that 2019 is going to be better than 2018 because why? I'm going to be better in 2019. Have a resolve that says that book you wanted to write will be written. That song you want to record will be recorded. That trip or those trips you wanted to take will be taken. That money you wanted to be saved shall be saved. That position you wanted shall be yours. That relationship you wanted to restore, it will be done by And here's the thing, when it comes to relationships, it's got to be done by faith. Because here's the thing, if, you, if, if you're in a contentious relationship with somebody and you've made it up in your mind, I'm not going to fight with them no more. I want to I squash this. Just because you go into them humble or as humble as you could possibly come doesn't mean they still trust you or like you. And so you got to have faith to be able to look at their mean eyes and them side-eyeing you and mean mugging you and still love them and say, God, I know they don't like me right now, but if I'm fully persuaded in this, I'm going to stay in the love of God and that will change. And not stay in that place like, look, I tried. I went to my brother and my sister. But at the time, they didn't feel like your brother or your sister. You got to give them time to trust you again. Let's just flip the script. If you know somebody's been doing you dirty, then all of a sudden they come and try to be nice to you, how many of y'all going to receive their niceness? They're not. You are not going to receive it. But when you're doing this by faith, eventually the love of God that's on the inside of you The Bible says love never fails. Never. Undisputed. Love never fails. So you just keep loving on them until them walls come down, until they see the consistency in you, until they see that you really mean this, and this ain't something you're just trying to do for your New Year's resolution, that you nice in January, then you kind of different in February. Then you're kind of distant in March. By the time the springtime, you done sprung away from them. You don't even like them again, and you don't even know why you didn't like them again. But Remember this, God's hand is on you. His purpose is with you. 
And if you have a desire in your heart and you have visualized it in your mind, you can do it and you have it. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? All you need is to get under the word of God, change the way you think, shift your posture, and make the necessary, necessary steps. Victory belongs to you. Go get it and go do it. We got to get a resolve. Are you resolved about what you're going to do next year? Here's the thing. Resolutions, again, come from emotional decisions. Yep, I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. You're excited in church until real life punches you in the grill. But when you resolved, when you resolved, I don't care how, I don't care how many hits I take, I'm resolved to win it. That's why I love boxers, because they get hit left and right. I don't care how many rounds they done lost, they still feel like I can still win this fight. I've seen boxers getting knocked to the ground. You can see that they, they're only 10% there. But get up and win a fight, because they've resolved, I'm not losing. I will not give up, and I will not give in. I didn't go through all them rounds of practice, get my ribs bruised and my eyes swollen to come to this fight and lose. And that's the way you got to feel like all that I went through in 2018, all the bruises, the hits, the verbal attacks, the emotional attacks that I went through, you think I'm coming into 2019 to lose? You done lost your mind. There has to be a resolve. I don't care. A thousand may fall to my left. Ten thousand may fall to my right. But I'm going to win. That's my resolve. That's my resolve. So it heads bowed and eyes closed. We got to get to a place again where we, we're resolved in everything that God has told us to do. And the first thing you have to resolve is who Christ is in your life and who God is in your life. I don't care what anybody else has said to you. Jesus is still the Lord of all. He's the deliverer. He's the Savior. And he's the only way to God. Resolve that. Because if you don't resolve that, you'll never get to God. So if you're here today and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want to give you an opportunity. So that's me, Pastor. And I, 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 I don't want to go into 2019 without settling this issue in my 2018. 